All right, so the word on the street is that you cannot catch a peacock bass when there's a cold front. Well, we got a cold front. The boys have off school, and we're gonna see if we can catch a peacock bass. We would have gone offshore today, but the ocean's too rough, so here we have it. We're getting some shiners, we got some top water, and we're going to a secret lake. So here's a scoop. We're on the hunt for peacock bass today. And down here in South Florida, most peacock bass live in these little residential ponds, and you just walk along looking for them. But the problem is we got a cold front. With a cold front, you've always got wind. And we're looking for these fish. We want to sight fish for them. So I'm gonna walk all the way down here, find a little isolated pocket where there's not a lot of wind. Hopefully we can find some fish. I'm using a little kale hook with a live shiner. Deadly on these fish. Peacock bass love structure. You're always looking for structure, whether it's a, a pipe, um, a culvert, that concrete seawall, rocks, whatever. Peacock bass love structure. Find structure, find fish. Oh, oh, I see, I see, oh, I see like 20 of them right here. Don't move, you guys. Don't move, don't move. Holy cow. Look at them coming, look at the weight coming. Look at the weight coming. Oh my gosh, that's a giant, you guys. Oh my gosh. That's a monster. He's got it. Got him. Are you kidding me? I missed him. He was right under there. Look at him coming out, look at him coming out. Oh, are you getting this on the surface right here? That's giant. Got him, got, got him. That's a big one. That's a big one. Oh my gosh. Dude, this is gonna be my personal best right here. This will be the biggest peacock I've ever landed if I can get him in. Dude, what a stud. Who says you can't catch a peacock on a cold front? Oh my gosh. I'm using a tiny hook. We've never been to this lake before. We literally just stopped and walked in. Oh my gosh, dude, come here. Look at that, look at that. Giant, look where he's hooked. Look where he's hooked perfectly, right in the corner. Oh my gosh, what an awesome fish. Look how small the hook is, y'all. Species Ocellaris, which refers to a butterfly. I mean, he's as long as my arm. What in a magnificent fish. We're gonna try to keep a couple for dinner, but this one's too big. Lives to fight another day. All right, you guys, we're back here in the middle of the jungle. All you do is take your hook right up through both lips. I'm using a 20 pound leader. These fish are very wary and when they see you, they don't bite as well. Oh, he just got nailed. Got him. I mean, what a bite. Just pounded it. These fish are so strong. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. He's trying to get me into the trees. Get back over here. Oh. Oh man, look how big this. Oh, get back over here. That's a big one. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to get down in the water for him. Come here, no. No, 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 I'll get him right here. Oh, come here. Oh, oh, come here. Oh, you've got him barely hooked. Yes. Look at that. Jungle fish, y'all. What an amazing, amazing fish. So strong. Keep that one for the tank. I think they brought the pool pops over there. You want to? Yeah, sure. All right. The boys have a tank at house, at the house, so they're gonna put this fish in it. Here you go. Hurry, so he doesn't die. Run. Make fun of sun. Awesome. Soaking wet, catching fish, having a blast. I'm using a Shimano Stratic 2500 with a Crow Series rod. These Crow Series rods are awesome. They have so much sensitivity, they're lightweight, and they're made by a youngster that's a fan of the show. So, Lathan, Crow Series rods, you rock, thank you, and I love them. And this Stratic 2500 is legit. It's amazing. Oh, just got pounded. How many there are in these lakes? And they're all so strong. He's got me way back in there. Are you kidding me? I'm never going to get this fish out. Oh, he, he, oh, he's still there. Tiny hook. I'm using as much drag as I can get on him. Come on. Look at the tail on that fish. Look at that fish, that's the biggest one yet. Oh no. Do you see how big this that is fish giant. is? This is a giant. Come here, big boy. Come here, big boy. Oh boy, look at that. Look how big that fish is. Hooked, look where he's hooked. Look where he's hooked, right there. The hook just came out. Nice, nice. You wanna put him in the cooler? Here, we're gonna keep this fish alive. Oh, you gotta run though, because he's- Do not drop him, do not drop him. Dude, this is incredible, you guys. Let's make one famous. The key when we're doing this is having a good, lively bait. We went to a Four Points Market in Coconut Creek. Nice guys, they have, they have all kinds of stuff. They have tackle, but they also have good, live bait. And if you're gonna try to catch these fish, good, live bait is the key. I'm using 20-pound test braid with a 20-pound uh, leader. Oh, you got one right there. What is that, a large mouth? He's got a large mouth. Very poor and skinny one. Yeah. You can see the peacocks have been eating all their food. So if you want to come do this, 20 pound test monofilament leader to a kale hook and a live shiner, you're gonna have a lot of fun. Oh, he nailed it instantly, instantly. Got him. He was right on that point. I mean, it's second, the second it hit the water, he ate it. I mean, it was like he was waiting. He's almost in the weeds. The second the bait hit the water, he pounded it. I don't even think he's that big, but he ate it like so fast. Come here, buddy, you just got my camera wet. Look at that, beautiful. I mean, these hooks are doing such a great job. That's a good size eating fish right there. I know they're gonna take a couple home. And as you can see, there's no shortage. So that's gonna be the last one that we're gonna put in the ice. And uh, 
We'll be eating good tonight. So this is exactly how I grew up. Fishing in people's backyards. Just fishing, having a good time. This is awesome. You having a good time, Jordy? That's an understatement. Okay, you're uh, running? Grab the small one, Jordan. You're terrible. Grab him. Dude, look how big that guy is. Are you kidding me? Oh, this water is a little cold. Oh my God. I got a question. Who thinks I should turn Sarah's swimming pool into a fish tank? It could happen. I think so. Uh huh. I think so. We should do it tomorrow. <laughs> Sarah may have a heart attack. She'll come home and there'll be largemouth bass in her pool. We caught them. We're about to clean them. Look at that. Beautiful fish. And then we're going to cook them. All right. Take that. Cut up into this thing's head. Take your knife and as close to that backbone as you can get it. Run it right down. Put very little pressure, just let your knife do the work. Use your thumb to separate it through the... Look at that. Absolutely perfect filet. Turn them over. Typically, I'll cut just like that. And just try not to cut through the backbone. That doesn't ruin everything, but it, it does make it more difficult. Cut through your pin bones. You'll hear it. Come back down the other side of the rib cage. Turn around. Perfect. Perfectly filleted fish. Come right down. Perfect. There's your skin. Always remember, these fish have a little set of pin bones right here. You can feel it with your fingers. That right there is what Sarah and I are having for dinner. Fresh peacock bass. And just like that, here we are in the kitchen, y'all. There's our fish. Now, typically whenever I do videos, I, I go out, I fish, I clean them, I cook them, and then I edit. Well, in this case, we went out and we fished and then we cleaned the fish and I came back last night and Sarah already had dinner made. So I threw the fish in the refrigerator. Check that out, look how pretty that is. And um, I woke up this morning and I started editing. Well, I still have to do the cooking part and I'm starving now. It's 146, which means I'm late on lunch and I'm really, really, really hungry. So I was in there working, thinking, what do I want? And this is what I want. All right, so it's very important to make sure your fish is dry. Then your seasoning will stick. This is original Everglades, no MSG. Oh, that's a little bit heavier than I expected. So I'm only gonna do one side. You go flour, egg, crust. That's our potato spuds. That's what I'm crusting the fish with right there. Egg. I don't have any fresh lemons, so I'm just gonna use just, just a dash of lemon juice. When you add the lemon to your egg wash, it gives it a nice fresh flavor. Very, very simply here. Dredge our fish. Let it take a bath and the egg wash and then crust it in your potato spuds. Trust me, you guys, if you've never done this, it's absolutely phenomenal. 
What you wanna do is make sure you let this dry. I say it every single video. When you're crusting fish or when you're crusting any meat, give it time to dry. Typically five, 10 minutes is enough, but if you let it dry for 30 minutes, that's even better. So in your sauce, you're going to need mayonnaise, relish, a little salt, and some fresh cracked pepper. Now, let's add our fish. Make sure it's not too terribly hot. You just want it to cook nice and evenly. So we've got our sauce made, our fish is in the oil, slowly cooking. Now I wanna butter some bread. This is so important. Buttered bread is the best. All right, check this out, y'all. The fish is done. Let's make this party happen. Both pieces of bread are buttered. And then we wanna come in here with some of our fresh tartar sauce. You can use as little or as much of this as you'd like. Take our nice fat chunk of fish. And then we'll take some cheese. Oof. Cover that rascal up. Now, let's finish our creation off. Ooh. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. That is the color of love. Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for all this wonderful food. Please nourish it to our body and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Mm -hmm. Babies are all in bed taking a nap. That's really good. I need to come up with a different phrase. But it really is good. What do you say when it's really good? It's really good. Mm. All right, I would love this. Would she? Mm -hmm. Well, there's plenty left over. It's like over. a souped up grilled cheese. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. This is a lot of fun, and I just encourage each and every one of you to get out there, have a good time, and enjoy the outdoors. There's so much to see, so much to do. But for now, we gone.